uh, different in that mm. the tail membrane is not around the, the tail, mm -hmm. the, the tail is free. And they've got big buffy ears, they're the only mm -hmm. bat in Australia where the ears actually meet in the middle of the head. Mm -hmm. And they've got wrinkled mouth, looks rather like a mastiff, so they used to be called yes. a mastiff bat. <laughs> except they're not dogs, therefore they're not mastiffs, so they've got renamed free tail bats. Mm -hmm. And they've got bloody big teeth, so if they mm -hmm. bite, it really, really hurts. Yeah. Okay. But fortunately, they're extremely docile. Thank you. The only thing they really don't like, Operation. which I'm just about to do, is having their wings stretched out, just so you can see okay. what their wings look like. Yeah, OK, yeah, you've got a good shot. So you can see it's a very long, narrow wing. These guys fly above the canopy, therefore they don't need to duck and weave to avoid trees because there's no trees up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can just scream at their very low-pitched voice and it bounces off quite big insects, things like grasshoppers and crickets, and they just go straight for them, as opposed to fluttering around branches and twigs yeah. and not getting yeah. spiked. Yeah, They're quite different. And you can see why they're called the white stripe free tail yeah. because they have white stripes one down each side now we're going to ask you to turn this way yeah. as well they don't like sitting for their portraits yeah. Yeah. it just okay. means i'm holding oh, it started this back Robert. in 1992 where so people we're going to just get the on this level yeah, sure that's There's one down each side. Yeah. Every now and then we come across one that has unusual white markings, like a stripe right across the belly or flecking across its head or its back or whatever, all over the place. And then, of course, you can recognise the individual bat without marking it. Uh, there was a study done by a bunch of bat biologists about 20 years ago of the injury rate from being banded and the death rate from being banded and a prohibition was put on banding any species where there was a history of more than 2% death rate because bat biologists want to look after the welfare of bats these ones had a death rate of 100% oh, you put a band on it, it'll, you're killing it, it's condemning to death because they they'd actually rip off their arms rather than put up with having this on, thing on it and of course they would then die so banding of these has been prohibited for 20 years and if you want to mark individuals, they're big enough to be microchipped so most of our free tails are now microchipped and Stephen's been doing that, which means you can mark individuals, you just have to run a wand across it and beep, yeah. and got a number. And we've actually had many retraps. Um, so I need another bag for these. There's probably more in there. Um, I, I, more I, I, I suspect so. Yeah, I haven't looked to see how many there are, but I'll just go back. I just wanted to show you what the free trail looked like. How does it go? That's excellent. So this is called a Gould's Wattle Bat. Yeah and most of the bats we get in our boxes are of this species. And if you look closely where my thumb is, you can see its head fur is very dark, and the back fur is much paler. Yeah. It's a two-tone bat. It's the only bat in Australia that's a two-tone bat. So whenever you see a bat with dark head fur and pale back fur, it must be this species. All right. And all the other bat species in Australia are the same colour all over. So this is quite easy to recognise. But also, you can recognise it from the ears, you can recognise, you can see it's got a very short face, it doesn't stick out a long yeah, way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can recognise it also from the tail. Um, the tail, you can see there's a membrane between the back feet and the tail, and the tail is completely inside that membrane. Oh. It doesn't stick out like a dog's tail, it can't, can't wag its tail at all, because the tail is completely inside this membrane. And it stretches it out like a bird's feathers and uses it as a rudder for steering, for turning corners. Oh, right. Yes, they're, they're very manoeuvrable. And you can see its belly fur is also quite pale. And it's got a, a cute little tongue that's poking its tongue out at yeah, you. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> telling, yeah, so telling that, what that's it thinks of you. We are naughty, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> what you are doing with me? <laughs> Leave me alone. And you can see they've got very, very sharp little teeth. They've got very sharp little teeth for chewing insects. They eat flies and beetles and moths. That's, that's their dinner. So they're not interested in biting people at all. They're interested in biting flies and beetles and moths. That's, that's what they eat. Free. They don't have to work hard like this. <laughs> okay. they, they give birth to live young. They breastfeed, just like you did when you, were, when you had little children. Because they're mammals, just like yes. us. Um, birthing time is November. The childhood of a bat is two months. So all the, all the baby bats are now grown up. They were born in November, now they're fully grown up. Oh, very yeah. short childhood. Oh, very we quick. have a very long childhood. They have a very yeah, short childhood. Just like you have. And at the other end, as you can see, it's got little toes. See the little toes there? Oh, yeah, got five yeah. little toes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And its toes are tiny, and its fingers are huge. 
mm. because it uses those fingers to fly. Yeah. And you can see there's veins, there's yes, blood supply yeah. in the wings because it's living tissue. So if you cut it, it hurts. It's, it's not the same as you so cutting your yeah, hair or your yeah, fingernails, yeah. which is just dead tissue. Yeah. It's living tissue. It has to stay healthy. Um, this one is a girl. Boys have penises, girls don't. You know about that. <laughs> big, enough, big enough to know about that. Yeah. Right, okay. um, yeah, so it's a girl. They get pregnant. Mating season is about two months' time in April. Mm -hmm. They get pregnant about August, so they actually store the sperm for about four months. And the pregnancy lasts about two months. They give birth in October, November. Mm -hmm. And they breastfeed, just like we do. They're mammals, just like us. Yeah. And the babies are weaned when they're about two months old. They would have been weaned last month. Mm -hmm. So they're very short childhood. And then they live for about ten years. Mm -hmm. um, we have banded all yeah. these little fellows. So each one has got a number, so, so we can tell uh -huh. when we caught her and how many times we've caught her. Mm -hmm. so and we can follow her pregnancies body. and her breastfeeding mm -hmm. and whatever mm -hmm. for her whole life. Mm -hmm. And we can then answer the question, if we follow her till she dies, how many children did she have? Oh. Did she have children every year or every second year or every third yeah. year? Yeah. Most, most humans have children maybe three years apart. Yeah. These guys, so far as we know, have children every year. And this particular species, unlike most other bats, has twins. Mm -hmm. So they always give birth so to how two. Old are you, well, no, we yeah. have no idea. Oh, you know. um, I, I could look up my records, mm -hmm. and if we banded her when she was a juvenile, maybe two years ago, we can say, yep, she's two years old. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. without reading the number and looking up my records, I can't yeah. tell you. Sure. Um, yes. And you can ask her, but she won't talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> so. And I was asking, is there any... Sorry? Sorry? All these have been done? Yes, I've just got these. You know, should take me about half an hour. How many we've got left? This is the test of strength. Three kilograms of bats. Very simple. We stand in a perfectly straight line. I'm a very good judge of perfectly straight lines. <laughs> Like here? Oh, like this. Yeah. The bats will probably fly off that way. They might not, but they usually do. Every now and then, you'll find a bat will just flop on the ground. Mm. If you're all rushing and try to pick it up, we'll end up with one squished dead bat. Yes. So don't. Leave me to do it. I'll pick up any bats that flop on the ground. Um, the bats, when they first leave your hand, will not be at flying speed. Okay. And so they will dip towards the ground. Okay. And they'll pick up <laughs> within a couple of metres and head up. So you don't hold them down here because they'll hit the ground. You hold them as high as you can. Yes. A boy! Complete the utmost stretch of your hand. <laughs> yep. And you slowly turn the bag inside out. Just push the bottom up by rolling it down and turning it inside out. Push the bottom up very, very slowly because they're very small, fragile animals. If you do it really quickly, you'll break their, you'll break their wings. They can't fly and they're dead. So do it really, really slowly. They'll probably come out bum first because that's the way bats live and they'll eventually liberate their wings and they'll stretch their wings and fly off. The ghoul swattle bats will probably be gone in half a second. Yes. Mm -hmm. The vespadulas will probably be gone very soon after but they're smaller and they may have started going torpid. It might take a little while to warm up. The free tail will sit there for 10 minutes before it makes up its mind. Who's doing the free tail? <laughs> just a test of whether you, you can hold your arm up that long. He certainly likes you, Robert. <laughs> I think it's just feeling a bit cold. It's a little bit cold. Um, but they, they go torpid in a, at, at will. Usually takes them about 10 minutes to do so. And sometimes I've just sat something on my shoulder for 10 minutes and it gets warmed up and eventually flies off. So Robert, if they do end up on the ground, are they able to get up off the ground ever? Or? Uh, no, they'll crawl to the nearest tree and climb that and then fly off. So if they're nowhere near a tree, they've got a problem. <laughs> I contemplated taking this one out with my hand until I saw what I was presented with. Oh, <laughs> dear. I'm so oh, I'm so I put my hand in the eye. The big one. A real bag of bats. No, I, I'm just oh. <laughs> oh, it's just for Rob Ronnie. <laughs>